So Kerry, I've known for, I don't know, years and years and years, actually not that long because we're not that old, but I've known her for a wee while and she is an absolute legend when it comes to Facebook. So she runs Facebook ads for um, uh, businesses, you know, for large, large, for large businesses and small businesses and of late, uh, and she gets really, she actually gets results as well. So a lot of ad agencies out there that uh, will run the ads they're not really as uh, invested in the outcome for the ads there. And the outcome is like getting leads and sales out of it. So you get a return on it. Kerry is absolutely invested in that. And uh, when you have a look at uh, some of the clients she's worked with, the testimonies that come through for her are phenomenal. So um, as I said, I've known her for a while and she, she really knows what she's uh, doing. So that's the reason why she's here tonight uh, to teach you about Facebook ads. Uh, if you have not come across Kerry before, she um, have a look, just look her up on Facebook. She's uh, all over there. Uh, but she integrates a lot of Facebook tools together as well, which is what I'm looking forward to uh, tonight. But she's also a marathon runner as well. So that's why she looks so fit and healthy. She runs a long, long distance. She runs the sort of distances that I hop into a car to drive. So <laughs> you'll often see her on the Gold Coast Marathon, those sort of things as well. And uh, she's got a whole sort of story behind how she uh, set up her Facebook uh, presence, uh, you know, with running those marathons. But I won't tell Gary's story for her. I'll uh, hand that over to Kerry to tell us a bit about herself and to tell us how they use Facebook and some of the new AI tools. So let's give Kerry Fitzgibbon a big <laughs> and a round of applause. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. Always love chatting about Facebook and now AI stuff and whatnot and very privileged to be um, at this event. Next. So thank you very much for the invitation. Now I can talk today, I can talk for days on this topic, by the way. I've been doing it for over 13 years now. I'm one of the grandmas of Facebook marketing. There's not that many you'll find out there that have been doing it as long as I've, I've been doing it. And as Nick alluded to, one of the reasons why I've been able to stay afloat, stay are up to date with everything is because I run marathons and when I'm running marathons or, or training for them at the very least I'm listening to podcasts and training videos and keeping up with absolutely everything so I uh, just wanted to step in and, and share that knowledge with you today now I've got uh, a bit of a, a presentation here I am going to give you guys a QR code at the back end of this so that you can get access to the slides right I um, you're just gonna have to wait it depends on when you're coming on this I haven't loaded the slides in yet but they will be loaded in and you'll get a copy of the slides tomorrow so you don't have to take notes it'll all be there for you so if that's what you want you'll get a QR code at the end um, to show you how some of the stuff is done all right so let me just jump in now and share my screen now what I'll do if you have got questions my biggest suggestion is type them in or write them down and I can get to them at the end I have got a fair bit to to cover in, in, a, in a shorter amount of time so um, if you can just get them in, I'll, I'll take questions at the end. I'm assuming that's okay, Nick. Does that work for you? Awesome. Absolutely. Yep. Unfortunately, I, I uh, multitasking, I know lots of people can do it, and there's a certain part of me that can do it, but especially when I'm deep in the trenches of teaching the stuff, it's harder for me to, to, to you know, stop and take questions and look at the, that. So I'm just going to go into and just going to make sure that you guys can uh, see my screen at the moment. I'm assuming we all can, uh, and you'll let me know if you can't. Excellent. Right. So I teach at the moment mainly Facebook marketing, but understand when I'm talking about this stuff, Facebook is 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 owns Facebook, it owns Instagram, it owns Messenger, and it owns WhatsApp. So when I'm sharing this stuff, essentially Meta is the, the holding company. It's called Meta nowadays, but Meta is Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger. I tend to resort back to the word Facebook or the company Facebook, um, but it is actually the multiple channel approach of all the, the businesses that Facebook owns that enable you to be able to do this stuff. So my big promise for you, oops, all right, all right, let me go. My big promise for you is I'm going to teach you over the next 60 minutes a brand new ways to use AI to generate better leads and more sales from your Facebook marketing. Okay. Now, um, you know, as we all are, sometimes when this, especially as coaches and consultants in the online space, when AI comes along, we're all petrified that maybe the AI will take over us because essentially they can clone our face, 
we can clone our voices, we can get uh, our, our whole everything about us and we can have an AI do it for us now essentially right this is this is where we're going but um I'm not scared I'm just embracing embracing it I love it I love how it speeds up the process I love how it can make more people get out you know uh, I guess market better if you use it correctly and I have seen so many mistakes with AI because it is so easy anyone can do it um, and so therefore you can sort of get people that are uh, are uh, uh, not quite as as I guess have the values that we have using it so I want to show you my four-step system for Facebook marketing which has been the same for a number of years it's a system I know it works but what I want to share with you is how you can make it quicker faster better and have time to do it using some of the like AI tools that, you know, to be honest, I'll share them with you today. They'll probably be replaced by, you know, <laughs> next week, who knows. Again, some of my favorite AI tools, these ones are as well. You are going to learn my step-by-step -step proven Facebook um, and AI marketing system that you can use in any business okay I still to this day have people come oh but I'm a service-based business how does this work for me or I'm a product-based business how does this work for me or I'm a network marketing business how does this work for me it works right for any business and I'll show you why that is the case and it really will help you get more followers more leads make more sales and get more freedom and I know Nick and I have spoken about this and I would say you guys are in the same boat here the reason why we got into business in the first place was because I'm assuming we didn't want to be tied down by a job right and the funniest thing that happens when we get into business is we realize that we are actually we bought a job some of us or we are tied into it but I like to do this stuff to help people get more freedom so you started the business for more freedom and it gives you that because ultimately if we've got money we've got freedom so I know this works um, from like I said all my years of experience over 13 years I know I look too young <laughs> years experience working with tens of thousands of business owners and walking the walk myself I'm not here just to teach you stuff that I learned from a book or learned from AI or god damn it you know a lot of them nowadays are starting brand new stuff not even having any experience and being the expert because of AI mine's actually from experience walking the walk doing it learning it implementing making sure what works is the stuff I teach Okay. And so I've been able to set, set up multiple income streams, including, you know, a, a, a greeting card for profit book that I started many years ago because I learned an, an ebook structure, right? The system worked for me to build out this. And I made my first lot of passive income with this little book nearly 13 years ago. Okay. Um, and then it just grew from there. And it was just earning $750 a month. And that was US dollars, just on absolute complete autopilot, right? Then there's my marathon girl brand. Like, so, you know, I got, dared many years ago because I'd been doing this Facebook thingy way before people actually believed you could make money from it so I got dared by you know someone who said oh if you're so good at this do you think you can take a brand new business from scratch not even like not even an idea and turn it into an income stream in 30 days and I said yeah sure so what I did I was a runner but not a marathon runner so I niched it down as we know you know niching down it, it works a lot better I and mean, you can't be everything to everyone so I niched down and I chose marathon running I started a page I taught the system that I'm, I'm teaching you know you guys tonight essentially and I teach people um, I you know built the brand awareness I built a, a, a database and then the first thing I sold was an affiliate product of Clickbank um, because I didn't have anything else and then eventually you know because I had the community the the list um I started asking them what they wanted and came up with Marathon Girl right so uh, and then uh, I bought a whole container of, of running tops because that was the feedback I got and I sold out of that that container before I even paid for the product right with the system okay so it's really cool how you know I love doing those sorts of things now this business makes me between 500 to a thousand dollars a day and it's my little passion business I spend I'm lucky if it's 10 hours a month on the business, right? So it gives me a lot of flexibility and freedom. I've been holding Facebook marketing retreats and I get about $50,000 a retreat and I hold them every six to eight 
weeks. I built a community called the Tribe Revive community all during the, that, that pandemic time um, to, to bring people together. And that was $3,000 a month. Um, and then I've got my core core business, the one that you're seeing me, you know, here with in front of you guys today. And this is a seven figure business. Okay. So I'm sharing this with you you know, because I walk the walk. I, I do the stuff for myself in multiple different income streams. So here's what's coming up for you guys. I'm going to show you how you can use Facebook and AI to generate hot leads, massive engagement, and ultimately an influx of sales, and then how you can automate the process, and especially with some of the AI tools out there. This is my easy to follow four step process to add, you know, both Facebook and AI marketing into your business, but to do it the right way. And having seen so many accounts and worked with so many business owners, I can tell you now, most of the people that come to me and say, it doesn't work, have not done it right. Okay. Um, so if you not, if this isn't working for you, it's it's not because you know it doesn't work, it's that you you possibly have been taught wrong or not taught. You have tried to listen to some of Facebook's suggestions, and if Facebook itself makes terrible suggestions on what you should be doing on here. And in fact, I've argued with many a Facebook rep over what works and have definitely been doing it a lot longer than half of them anyway. All right. And some of the future stuff here as well, the latest AI stuff. All right. But first, let's first look at the biggest mistakes that will cost you money. These are three specific mistakes that I see so many times and they'll cost you money. The first one is boosting a post, right? Boosting a post is the big blue button that comes underneath your post, especially when you've got a business page, right? We all should have business pages as, you know, personal profile, a business page. And it's a blue button that appears under the bottom and it says, you know, and it's a it's boost post. And often you'll get a notification from Facebook saying, you know, why don't you boost this post? It's performing a lot better than other you know posts out there. That's a big mistake. Uh, you might as well take your money and, you know, put it down the toilet and flush it. Okay. So that's, and I'll just give you an example and I'll show you an example of uh, the difference here. Okay. So this is a boosted post. This one here was a boosted post. It looks the same. I know, but there's a big blue button at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it. Boost post. Okay. So you push that. That there is the same as this here, right? They're both the same post. One was the big blue boosted button on your page. The other, I logged into Ads Manager and I set up a campaign with that post, right? So there is a, a real difference. Uh, and Nick probably knows how this goes out there. And some of you other guys that have done it, a bit of, you know, girls have done posting and, 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 and you know, put yourself out there. As there's lots of trolls out there. They can be complete dickheads. Or, um, and I have had abuse for this, this, this whole thing because people think that this here is a boosted post. It's not. It's an ad run and ads manager. Like I said, there is a difference. So that's the first mistake I see. Back away from the boost button. Um, you've got no strategy behind it. And really all it will do is get you more engagement on that. And if there's no strategy behind it, it, it doesn't work as well. <coughs> Excuse me. A boosted post, there we go. And this is just one of the reasons why you should back away from that boost button. This is an example of the exact same post. One's a boost. One is done in ads manager. The bottom is a boost. Like, so I pushed the boost button just to prove the concept. And the top one here was I turned the same post into an ad. You can see just from, if we're talking vanity metrics, and that's all we're talking here is vanity metrics, which I don't think are important or as important. The bottom one, which is the boost, you know, almost the same amount of money, but only had a reach of 767, page engagement of 305 and post engagement of 305, right? Whereas the one where I turned it into an ad, exactly the same thing, 2000, you know, you can see the difference. Over nearly 3,000 people it reached, uh, 2,200 people engaged on it for around about the same amount of money. Okay, so I'd rather put money into something that's going to give me more traction. Okay, so that's just one of the reasons why. <clears throat> so the cool thing, though, is that for my other one, my ad one, right, I'm able to hook up, I was hooked up a messenger in here and able to leave a little bit of a, a message flow in here that people, and I could build my list at the same time. Okay, so they leave a comment. I'm now looking at building a list. 
people sign up to get reoccurring notifications. And then I can upsell them onto a, a webinar. So always have a strategy behind some of the posts you do on the page, whether that's collecting lists or you know driving people to take another action. So that's just one of the ways that we can we can you know use our our, our posts and ads. But more on that strategy a little bit later. That's collecting your leads off people that engage with your posts. Okay. The next mistake I see is not targeting the right person. So I see this time and time again, that people just don't get the right audience, the audience is correct. So just to give you an example, when you're in Facebook, if you scroll through your feed, your Facebook feed, you can actually, if you see an ad, which is usually a sponsored, called a sponsored ad or a sponsored post, but it's an ad essentially, you can right click on three buttons to the side of it and you can actually see why you are seeing this ad, right? It will give you why you're seeing the ad. So here's one I had in my news feed. It was a sculpted vegan. She's, you know, really popular in that. And I can see why she's targeted me. Okay. She's targeted me because I'm interested in physical fitness, physical exercise, and more. Very, very broad targeting, right? We're probably all interested in that. The, the kicker here is I'm not a vegan, never want to be a vegan. So this would not interest me. So she's popped this ad out. She's put it in front of me and I'm not going to take the action that she wants to take. I'm a wasted audience. I see this time and time again. There's a time and place for more broad targeting, but when you've got a lower budget and you don't actually know who your audience is, you know, sorry, when you've got a lower budget and, and you're driving people to, to top of funnels type of stuff, this can be a big mistake. You can waste a lot of money. So not actually targeting the right people or knowing who your audience is, is the second big mistake as well. And the third one is going to really surprise you. Okay. I, it's posting too much. Okay. I, um, it was a big thing a few years ago that, you know, you post every day, you post several times a day, you post when your people are online. Nowadays, you can actually overdo it. And I know, you know, it's a, it's a it's an organic strategy that I know lots of people adopt and it might work well for them. I'm a busy business owner. I'm doing what I do because I want freedom. So I don't want to spend all my time on Facebook trying to post everything. I've got to post a reel. I've got to post a tech. I've got to post a story. I've got to, you know, so posting too much. I generally say one, two, two, two good bits of content a week. And then what we do is we turn them into video ads okay if you want to do more and you're having fun doing more happy days but people actually think I am everywhere all the time because I actually just run paid ads right you either pay in time or you pay in money so that's another mistake I see people making and you know they're all the way out they're posting 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 but are you actually getting business from your posts is it actually getting any traction or are you just stressing yourself out and mostly most business owners will tell me I'll care it's so freaking time consuming and exhausting but I've been told that's what you have to do no I'm telling you now you don't need to post every day right post a couple of good bits of content I'm going to show you how to do that as well okay if you are not running ads so you either pay in time or you pay in money, you're missing out on making more money. It's as simple as that. And here's a, a little study they did at one at Adelaide University, and it's on small, medium, and big brands and years without advertising, okay? And if you're a small brand, okay, and you start out and you go, you know, a, a, a year without advertising, look at how the business just drops down, right? Eventually, you're going to, you know, it's going to slow down quite considerably in terms of sales if you're a big brand yes you can get away with it a lot more but there is still a significant drop over the years if they don't advertise big brands still do they spend a lot on advertising they don't want this drop they want it to go up and medium brands if you're medium it's even worse over years right you're going to be forgotten so you need to pay to play because we want the going your sales going upwards over the years right but here's why you know we find most business owners aren't running ads and love to have your feedback where you know if you're not why not and generally it's lack of knowledge lack of confidence poor past experience not enough time to learn and not enough money to pay an agency to manage because let's face it if you don't have the knowledge and you don't have the time to learn you're going to have to pay someone to do it for you. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting a lot of money, right? So these are generally the reasons why, okay? And that's why, you know, people do pay me between 15000 and 60000 because I just generally 
you know, I get results for them. And, and Nick said that before. Okay. And just to give you an example of, of some of the people that use the system I'm about to teach you, combined with some of the AI tools and the results they're getting. Steve Eagle made three, you know, 3.3 million in extra revenue in two years following the system I'm going to teach you. Uh, Carl and Bettina, they went from a, a national company to an international company, making over $70,000 uh, in sales, selling secondhand sales a month. Uh, Jody made an extra fifteen thousand dollars in two weeks after implementing my system, um, and she's a coach. And we've got a tradie business here, uh, and they get fifteen thousand dollar contracts after actually about a month of implementing the system as well. Lisa's an e-commerce business. And after one of the ones I'm going to teach you with the messenger flow, she had a two hundred and sixty nine percent increase in revenue um, after uh, implementing one of, of the the, one of my strategies over a retreat over a weekend. So she went from $4,000 a month to $16,000 a month. Um, Ken, over $200,000 a month in sales and growing, and he keeps buying property from the system that I'm going to teach you as well. We've had Brianna go from logo to sales in a life coaching business. Uh, by the way, Ken's NDIS housing. So that's how, you know, his second home, he does NDIS housing. And Brianna's a life coach. So went from a logo to making sales within a week. And that's a really tough gig, life coaching. You know, it's, it's super, super competitive industry. So now it's your turn. I'm going to show you what I do to make this happen. Okay. So the four-step system that was meant to come up in like bullet points like this, but you get it on the screen like this, all right? First one's finding your ideal clients. I'm going to show you an AI hack how to do that. Build a community of raving fans. These are what we call your tribe. Capture leads using Messenger and essentially, uh, and then make sales. Step four is make sales with three funnels, Messenger, SMS, and email. So I'm going to jump straight into that. But because this is a system, I just want to quickly share with you the power of having a system. This is a um, kitchen bathroom renovation business. And um, she ran a campaign and ended up making, getting $25,000, 50K contracts, a couple of 25,000 and then 50K contracts from rolling out the system. She took the exact same system and started a brand new business, brand new business. So this is a bathroom renovation business, and this was a brand new, didn't even have a website, didn't have anything, just implemented the same system, built the list, got, sorry, uh, got the, knew who the audience was, built the community of raving fans really quickly, built the list and upsold, and then made within a 20 sales in four days, and then has gone on to build this as $50,000 a, a year side gig. And it is pooch portraits. So what she does is she outsources them. People send in pictures of their pooches and someone paints a picture as behind here. So that was a, a, a brand new, brand new business, you know, rolling out the system. So the first step is finding your ideal clients and we use AI. So this is how we find our ideal clients. Okay. So just before I jump into how we find it. This is just one of the examples Facebook uses to customize some of your ideal audiences, the people that are going to buy your stuff, right? So first of all, we have, well, second of all, but we have these custom audiences, right? Custom audiences are audiences we can have inside Facebook of people that have already, they already have interacted with us. They have a problem. They know we are the solution. They may just not have heard about us right now, okay? So these are our custom audiences. We can build audiences of people that visit our website, people that download an app, or we've got an app, people who are on our list, on our database already. Facebook can match uh, phone numbers and email addresses, people that watch our videos on our pages, people that fill out forms, people who interact with our Facebook page, people who interact with our Instagram account, and so on. All of this stuff here, Facebook is building out audiences for us, right? But before we can get these beautiful custom audiences, we need to know who to target to visit our website. We need to know who to target to get onto our database, to watch our videos, to interact with our pages and so on, which is, which is you know, the step I'm about to show you. But ultimately, once we know that and we've taken people from not knowing who we are to 
now interacting with us in one way or no another, this is where the real magic happens here. And it's beautiful because Facebook has 56 thousand data points on each and every one of us right with this information it's able to put together highly targeted buyers for us right that we can run ads to right and then um, and one of the ways it can do this is if we have a list of buyers and we load that list of people that buy our stuff already or you know uh, you know we've got the email addresses or phone numbers facebook can match those people and then produce what we call a lookalike audience of the 99% the same. And this gives us leverage because it can take an audience of people that buy your stuff that might be about 100 people, it might be more, right? And turn it into a targetable audience of between 180,000 to 220,000 people that are exactly like, let's just say, people that have already bought your stuff or people that have visited your website or people that have downloaded, you know, on your database. This gives you leverage, right? But in order to do this, in order to build out our customized warm audiences, First, we need to look at how we find our ideal clients. So these are our cold audiences. These are people that are, uh, you know, have a problem. We're the solution. They just don't know about us yet, right? Now, the problem is most people target too broad or too generic. And that's just the way they go. So let's just say you wanted to target people that are business owners, for instance. So you go into the back end of Facebook and they give you an option to target business owners, right? Or people that are interested in business owners or whatever, right? It's too broad, okay? Well, this is the little secret and the little trick that we like to do, okay? This is called the no one else would trick. And it's a sentence you want to put together when we're doing our research. Now, I can tell you now, most people don't do this stuff. They just go, oh, I could just target broad term, term people that are interested in running right before they were trying to get me all right and they might get me but they might get you guys as well so this is the no one else would trick now how it works is you want to think about this when we're doing our research stage and this is where we're trying to find out who our cold audiences are and the sentence goes along the lines of and if we were using golf so let's just say you sold a, a golf balls right and you want people that are enthusiastic about golfing so if you sat there and went, all right, a golf enthusiast would know who Tiger Woods is, but no one else would, right? You, you're going to get non-golfers. If you ran an ad and you said Facebook target people that have the interest of Tiger Woods, they're probably even going to target me, okay? Because I might have interacted with this page at some stage, you heard of him, watched a video and whatever else. So Facebook thinks that I might be interested, right? And it's the same with Phil Mickelson, right? If you use the, hey, a golf enthusiast would know who Bubba Watson is, but no one else would, you're going to, if you put Bubba Watson into Facebook and say, find people interested in Bubba Watson, Facebook's going to get some very targeted golf enthusiasts, okay? So this is the stuff that you want. You don't want to be wasting money sending ads out to people that are not going to be interested in your stuff. So here's how the sentence work. A topic enthusiast would know who or what this is, but no one else would. So let me roll it out into a sentence like this. Okay, here's another example. A marathon runner would know who Hal Higdon is, but no one else would. If I said a marathon runner would know what the Boston Marathon is, but no one else would, I'd probably get everyone here as well, because at some stage you might've interacted with. So I would run my ad, you've been interested in the Boston Marathon, I'm going to get a whole heap of non-marathon running enthusiasts. But if I targeted someone like Hal Higdon, that sentence runs true. I know I'm specifically going to get in front of my audience. So we go and research the Hal Higdons, right? Now, where this rule doesn't work, so where you wouldn't use the no one else would, would be sometimes for local businesses. So for instance, like, you know, perhaps you're, if you have a, you know, a, a store where demographically people come into your your place so physios um and the likes of you know this might not work you'd use a demographic audience so you drop your pin and you 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 know circuit it um, a, a certain location around your area which you can target in saying that though i still you know suggest that some of my physios and that niched out you know hey 
do an ad that targets marathon runners, do an ad that targets, you know, you know, new mums with sore backs or whatever else. Okay. You know, maybe real estate agents, you might not use this as well because you want to find homeowners and it's a bit harder to use this. But for most of us, this is that no one else would trick will work to for you to come up with interests that you can target inside Facebook when you're running ads. So what we do is we use chat GPT to find those no one else interests of your target market. So this is how we do it. We ask it some questions and it is research initially. Okay. So we want to go into chat GPT and we want to start with a question. Tell me about, and then you put your topic, your, your business or your industry there. So for me, tell me about marathon running. Tell me about business owners, right? Tell me about e-commerce business owners or whatever that is, okay? And you get it to just start listing off things. Then what you do is you start to get a bit more specific. And I'm just going to go through these quite quickly in that. But essentially what we're looking for is we want to find out those little things. What specific equipment or tools are, you know, marathon runners using? What books or magazines are they reading? What blogs or forums? What Facebook groups do they do they, do they they belong to? And it's going to spit out some stuff, right? So ChatGPT will spit out, you know, answers here. When you see something that looks like it's, you know, a, um, you can pretty much tell a no one else would interest, you want to write it down. Okay. And you want to get as many of these as possible. So you just keep asking questions. What brands make that? You know, what tools is that? And so on. So here's, you know, an example of how I use that. Okay. So I've gone, you know, there are many training, you know, I've said, you know, what, what I've asked the questions and one of them is what, training programs are there out for 40 year old females who want to run a marathon. Okay. So the first one's couch to 5k. Okay. Second one's Hal Higdon, right? So I'm going to write that down. Third one's Jeff Galloway. So the couch to 5k, I know that is probably more for beginner runners, but it's not necessarily going to target my, my marathon runners. I'll go Hal Higdon, Jeff Galloway, Nike run club might be a bit broad because it's Nike. So I might probably wouldn't go with that one. Active.com, um, it might be a bit broad. I, I would maybe go and a bit, do a bit more research there. But that's what I'm looking for. These sorts of, you know, coaches, influencers, apps, and so on. If I was to do this for a business owner niche, so if you wanted to target business owners, well, you know, I would be looking at things like targeting people that are um, business owners. So I'd go, all right, Zero, MyOp, Salesforce, uh, you know, uh, MailChimp, Aweber, and so on. You know, if it's e and so, so I'm looking for those sorts of things, and I'm writing them down or putting them on a spreadsheet. If you want to, you know, spreadsheet it. I usually give everyone a, a little form to, to do it with as well. Then what we want to do is we want to take all those interests that, that ChatGPT has come up with, and sometimes you've got to keep prompting it, you know, who are the brands and so on, and then we want to match it in Facebook. So we go into the back end of Facebook where we can run ads. It's usually the ads manager section of Facebook. We've all got it, whether you've set up an ad or not, you've got the access to it if you've got a Facebook account. Um, and then we match it inside Facebook, okay? So we go in, we look at audiences, and we go in and start searching. So we start putting in, you know, I put in Hal Higdon. It shows up. It shows up as an interest. I'm happy days. Then what I do is I go, well, let's just see whether it's going to make more suggestions. So I hit the suggestion button here, and it's come up with Hoka 1-1. Well, that's a specific shoe that's better for marathon running, right? Runner's World, which is a, a running magazine, which I might target. So now I've got Hal Higdon, Hoka 1-1, Runner's World. Half marathon and marathon, way too poor, right? You might even say that you guys are interested in it. So those are three. And then I go back to my list and I add in another interest. And I keep on doing that, right? I'm looking for an audience size of between a million to three million in, in Australia, New Zealand, maybe more in America without going too broad for my top end cold audience, okay? Again, if you're local, then your audience is going to be a lot smaller. You're not going to have a million people to target. It might be closer to, you know, a couple of hundred thousand, maybe. Okay, um, so that's the first step. We research our audiences. We use ChatGPT. We ask it some specific questions. We go into Facebook and we match and we set up saved audiences. So these are cold audiences that you can then advertise to later, right? So that's the, the first step there. Step two, now we've got these little cold audiences. We've got them sitting in the back there. Now we want to 
turn them into a community of raving fans, right? Turn them into a warm audience. A warm audience are people that uh, have interacted with us. They know they've got the problem, we're the solution. And that's what we do in step two. Now, here's just, like I said, one example of why this step is important, right? So this is an ad campaign, and this is for a client. And the top uh, line here is a cold audience. The middle one is a warm audience. And the bottom one here is a lookalike of previous purchases. As you can see, and not sure whether you can see this close, but my warm audience over 52 purchases um, at $11. Compared to, and it's a 20, 20 times return on ad spend. 20 times. Compared to, I mean, the cold's not bad, but there's not that many purchases. Only three still at $18. And then we've got our lookalike, which had 17 purchases at $21, right? So we know if we warm them up, they're going to be cheaper in the long run, okay? They're getting to the bottom of the funnel. So the quickest, easiest, cheapest way to get noticed, build your brand and community is video. <laughs> all right so video is the cheapest easiest quickest way so all cool if you want to get in, in front of the video here's an example of dean he's our tradie he's not sure whether you can see this here but you know thirty-five and a half thousand people this video reached uh, had 48 shares um, and only twenty-three thousand views on it right that's just one example and, and he's a you know tradie there so purpose of them we it's not just to build brand awareness although videos do that super well it helps you exactly identify who your avatar is so this is the demographics of your ideal client you might think you know and you might have a really good gauge of that but this really does actually narrow it down because once you know who that is then you can run ads directly to them and what it does it massively reduces your advertising costs the reason why is that if you, Facebook or Meta is pleasing two masters, one is the end user scrolling through the news feed, so the consumer, the other is the it needs to make money, the shareholders. So it makes money by business owners running ads. If business owners are running ads that please the consumer because they look at that video or that ad and go, they're speaking directly to me. They know who I am. They know my problem. They feel my pain. They are my solution. They'll interact with it and 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 Facebook will see that and it will reward you by lowering your advertising costs, okay? So let's take a look at how this plays out. So again, we've got Dean that I just showed you before. He's a trader. Now, what he does is he sells in a couple of different businesses, but one of his businesses is supply of composite decking, which is a decking material that's a non-slip decking material, okay? So that's what he sells. Now, the different types of audiences that could, could you know, be interested in this decking material or the, the uses for it, should I say, around pool areas, they're very popular because they're non-slip, okay? So we know when he's running that video, we can look into the back end of Facebook because Facebook's collecting the data for us. It's all free. If it's on our page, we can have a look at the data on it and we can see exactly the demographics and so on of the people watching that those videos and in this one here we've got you know specifically he's got the 55 year old males were the highest with the 50 55 to 64 year old male female combination being the ones that are most engaging in watching this video so if you think about it like this, if we know that our audience for him selling his composite decking, because anyone can buy it, like, but if he knows it's mainly over 55 to 64, well, he can do ads that address the problem that a 55 to 64-year-old person would have, as opposed to, let's just say, a problem of a 35 to 44. So 55 to 64, you want to have non-slip decking, non decking around your swimming pool so that you or your wife don't slip into the pool and hurt yourselves. As opposed to, if it was, let's just say, 35 to 44, hey, make sure you get composite decking around your swimming pool so that you, you know, your children don't fall in the pool, right? Different message because it's a different demographic. Once you know it, you can advertise directly to them and provide the right solution to their problem and be there, right? So that's, you know, 
a really good reason why you want to be running videos so you can actually start to know who that demographic is and speak directly to them. It takes all the guesswork out, okay? And again, that's all data, essentially AI that Facebook's is collecting in the back end, okay, that you can get access to. Now, this is the very latest in trend, massive organic reach. I will mention it. I um, do a few, but I don't do it how most people do. So the latest trend is Reels. Right, you might have seen them. They're short form videos. They're under, I think some people have even got under three minutes. They change. So I think I've only got access to 90 second ones, but let's just say, shit some giggles here, under three minute short form videos. Okay. And they got massive, you know, viral if, from people because, you know, we all started digesting them and stuff like that. They're slowing down a lot, but lots of people are trying to crack the code. They're trying to do a reel or if made famous by TikTok, get, you know, lots of views and so on. But again, that's vanity metrics, okay? But I just wanted to mention that, you know, short form videos are really handy to do. I do them, but I turn them into ads, okay? I don't get, you know, this is at my friend Rory. He is an expert on it. He gets, you know, millions of views. He built up his profile from zero to, you know, a few hundred thousand in six weeks. But this was his full-time job doing short form videos. This is his thing. So, you know, uh, unless that's your full-time job and, and it took him ages, you know, each day to edit videos to do it. Um, they're great. Fantastic. Um, we prefer to pay to play right so we know that videos get massive engagement and they can get lots of reach and they can help us find our exact avatar but most people will say to me oh that's all good Kerry but what do I talk about in my video or I don't actually want to do a video I'm too shy I don't want my face in front of you know the camera and so on and so on um, well there's a solution we use AI right and there's some really cool tools that I like so this is my all-time favorite tool, and this is what I use for content ideas. It is Answer the Public, right? This is what it looks like when you go into it. Answer the Public is a free tool. You get three searches, IP searches, I think a day even. It used to be one, but I think they've increased it a bit more. And what Answer the Public does, it scours the internet for the most frequently asked questions around what you give it a topic okay so i typed in marathon training here and it's come up with all the frequently asked questions that people are asking out there what they want to know what marathon training does to your body why taper for a marathon training um, you know um will marathon training lose weight right so it usually goes from most searched to least searched questions that people are asking around a topic so you put your topic in there you get the questions uh, and you know you can come up with a year's worth of content in just a few clicks on exactly the problems that people are wanting solutions for okay um so you don't have to guess the content like i said whole year's worth of content in just two clicks then what we can do with this is we can take one of these so what marathon training does to your body and essentially you can use ai to write the script, right? I mean, I know about it. I'd probably go live and do a live video. It's so much quicker for me to do that. But, you know, again, if you don't want to, you get AI to write the script. We can go into ChatGPT and ask a few questions in there and get it to write the script. Or we can go into, you know, you can actually, you, lots of other places where we can get it to, to write content and write script out there. This is just, just, just one of them, okay? So you don't even need to write script anymore. You've got a AI that can do that for you. And then you don't actually even have to turn up, all right? If you don't want to, you don't have to turn up. We can use AI to create the video. So come up with what the problem um, or what people are searching on, get a script written for it, or we can get this tool here. So I use one called Lumen5 and it comes up with a, like a PowerPoint presentation of, and it just summarizes a script. Literally, you can go from the content to the video in less than five minutes, all right? There's other AI tools out there. There's one I'm playing with at the moment, and it's as realistic as you can possibly get in the way I look, and it's called Hey Gen. So I got it to do, it's Hey, H-E-Y-G-E-N. I got it to do a, um, a me, <laughs> come up with me. And boy, I showed my partner and he didn't even, couldn't tell the difference. And you can get, you know, AI to do your voices. And, you know, I'm sure Nick's probably shared some of those with you, but you can use AI to produce voice. I like 11, 11 labs is one of the ones I use to produce a clone of my voice. 
Hey Jen to produce a clone of me. But if you don't want your face to your business, then use something like Lumen 5 and it will just come up with a PowerPoint presentation with a script you can get done in AI, right? So, um, and that's, you know, videos, right? So best of all, we do one to two videos maximum a week, but, right, we turn them into video ads for maximum exposure, more freedom, quicker results. So we turn them into an ad and we target those cold audiences, our lookalike audiences and our warm audiences to warm them up. But that's the, the top of the funnel type of stuff. So you don't have to be posting all the time. You know, here's just an example of, you know, cool little ad. Uh, no, no, I, this one stopped my scroll in, in my newsfeed. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, just to just to give you an idea here, so we've got an ad, there's a video view ad, you know, I can get over 60,000 people on it for one cent, one cent, okay, right, and I can target multiple different audiences, so that's the one ad or, multi, you know, for one cent, and then I can target all at the same time, you know, broad, you know, UK, US, warm, to warm people up, lookalikes, and so on. Right, so this is the way I run ads and I get in front of more people for, guess what, less than a cent per view. Right, that gives us a lot of exposure. That's step two, building that community of people that know, love and trust you, showing it to step one, the cold audiences, and I do look like a warm because I have them. Okay, but what I want to ultimately do as well is put people onto a list, take them off, meta take them off wherever and start building a list and we generate leads and build a list using messenger okay now for the real magic so this is facebook messenger and a chat bot the reason why i use messenger is 1.3 billion people are active on facebook messenger every month okay whenever i go to an event and i ask the question who here communicates with their friend and family via messenger, most of the people in the room put their hands up. Right? So why not communicate to people in the way that they are used to communicating? And, you know, lots of cool things about benefits of messenger, but really quickly, right? People opt in to messenger with one click. If you're running an ad, which is an ad that shows up in the newsfeed, someone clicks on it and it opens up in messenger, it's cheaper because you're keeping people in the in the metaverse. And we can send sequences over time. So we can build out a messenger funnel. It's just like an email funnel, but it's using messenger, right? We, It's so much more effective than email marketing, although I do the lot, okay? Because it has a higher deliverability open rates and click-through rates. So it means that when you build a list using inside messenger, right? Using a chatbot app, when you send out a offer to that list, more people get it, more people open it, and more people click on links and go through to your offer page, right? So it has a huge amount of power there. Open rates for Facebook Messenger average between 70 and 90% versus email, which is 18 to 20, right? on average. And I know I think Nick, what you were saying yours is usually a bit higher, right? But here's a comparison. This is an email I sent out. I had 15.7% open rate on this one and a 2.7% click-through rate. The same thing in Messenger, right over on the far right-hand side there is the is the open rate, 78.44%. And of those people, 22.8% opened it. It's just so much more effective. And I've got, you know, 100% open rates, 94, 90, 93, 97, 96. And I love that, right? This really does make Facebook Messenger a powerful, low cost way to build a list. And here's how we use it, all right? So here's an example for anyone that holds webinars, okay? So you run an ad. The ad's in shows up in Facebook, it shows up in Instagram, okay? And when people click on the ad, it opens up in Messenger. And then they go through a series of automated messages where we collect email addresses, we collect phone numbers, we collect email webinar registrations, and we get people registered for a webinar, all right? And this is all completely automated. The best thing about this is that when it comes time to running the webinar, the reminder pops up in Messenger. Ping! And they get a link to join the webinar and messenger now i don't know about you guys 
But one of the main reasons why I don't turn up to webinars that I have registered for is I don't, the emails, I've got about oh, hundreds of thousands of unopened emails and I just don't, I don't, I forget. And I don't open the email because I don't see it. But I can tell you now, when it, I've been to a couple that pops up in Messenger and I'm like, oh, and I'll go on to it because the reminder and the link is right there in Messenger. It just makes more people turn up, right? I'll show you the example here. So here's just one of the ones that I did a, a while back and it had a 61% attendance rate. I typically get anywhere between 50 and 50 and 80% turn up rate nowadays on my webinars, but the majority of those people have actually come through Messenger. If we're actually talking about people that have joined through Messenger, well, it's more like 90% of people, right? The ones that don't turn up are the ones that have registered with email only. Um, so here's just an example of, um, you know, one of my webinars. Uh, again, you know, because I had a good, if everything else stays the same, the turn up rate being a little bit higher than typical, which, you know, is, is, is nowadays 30% turn up rate on a free event is, is, is good, right? Really good. In fact, most people get even less. They will get 15% turn up rate. I get consistently over that 50%, which means everything, if everything else stays the same, I, I make a lot more money. Okay. This one here was a $14,000 worth of profit for just a, 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 a webinar. It's nice. You know, gives me a bit of freedom. Hey, <laughs> Um, here's an example of an online store. So we've got, and it's a subscription, cheese subscription site. So again, this is an ad. People click on it. They go through a series of messages, okay? So we've got two T's and C's that are compliant. We get email addresses and we get phone numbers. We're building three lists, messenger, messenger subscribers, emails, phone numbers, okay? And then we do an upsell, okay? And the upsell's like, hey, listen, now that you entered into the contest, we want to reward you. Do you not want to know what that is? And they go, yes. And they go, well, why don't you just go and buy something now? We'll give you 20% off. And if you win, we'll credit you back. But just remember the 20% discount, it expires. And then you make the expiry finish before the, the contest finished. So that gets people buying during the time that you're building a list. This is how well this one worked. Okay. Um, and people went off to the website. Uh, so this one here, he had over 17,297 names, emails, phone numbers. Spent eleven thousand dollars and twenty spent over eleven thousand dollars. He actually asked to spend more um, because he's got a really good back end to his business. We don't a lot of our clients won't even spend that amount, but you know this is why he did a uh, cost per entry. So it was sixty five cents to build his list, but he made sales during that time. Ran it for three weeks, made two hundred and ninety eight sales at that time. This is not even the follow up. Okay, the income it was twenty eight when I looked at this number, but it actually ended up, he said, as directly during the time the contest was running, it was well over 32,000. And he built the list. He had a little database that he can follow up with. All right. And so he ran it again. Okay. Now this is a service-based business example. So this is a financial planner and same, same, same concept. Okay. Click on an ad, go through messenger. Now financial planners don't normally get a qualified lead for $7.91, right? And this was a qualified lead. They wanted a financial plan, okay? And they were opting in. She was getting them for $7.91 and then they were booking calls. And she ended up with 72 names, emails, and phone numbers for an ad spend of $569.72, right? This is actually one of the industries I would have thought that worked less for, but worked super well, okay? So as I said, I use Messenger, but I still get emails and I still get phone numbers. So I can do that omni channel marketing. That's the kicker here. Communicate to people or get in front of people in the way that they love to communicate, right? And that's when we can then, you know, make sales, remarket and scale, you know, multiple different ways. So once we find our audience, we can build a tribe who knows, loves and trusts us. Then we can sell them multiple things. So my marathon girl business, running tops, caps, shoelace bracelets, training programs, nutrition programs, World Marathon Girl Day, a group, and so on, okay? I just keep saying, what do you guys want? They tell me, and I sell it before I build it, essentially there. When you've done this correctly, all the hard work pays off. You can promote to your database through email, SMS, and Messenger. You can also run retargeting ads, to your warm audiences, okay? So check out the difference when we're running ads to people that have already interacted with us, okay? Yeah. Actually, I just showed you guys before, but just to show you again, our warm audience, over 52 at $11. That's a 20 times return on ad spent, as opposed to our other audiences, which 
are less. It really does pay off. Okay, so these are some of the different types of retargeting ads we would run. Okay, this one here is the yoga face lady. She's amazing. But this one here is retargeting people that downloaded her free five yoga poses freebie. Okay, Shh. this offer isn't for everyone, right? She's done a takeaway, right? No, no, but I want it to be for me. You have shown your commitment by downloading the free freebie. So you've actually unlocked 20% discount. I've saved a copy for you, right? She knows her audience. Her audience doesn't like the really hard sell, but look, she's introduced the, a 20% discount. She's, you know, fed into what she knows and the language she knows they'll love based on the actions that they've taken, okay? You've been practicing. Well, if you're enjoying it and you're ready to take the next step, hey, why don't you claim your 24% discount, okay? And that's, you know, the languaging that her people, she knows, would you know resonate with because she's doing really really well so how do we get people to buy because we now know we need to do ads or retargeting ads to get them to actually take the offer and one of the best ways we can do this is we write compelling ad copy right we've done the research in step one we know who our audience is they're basically you know we're, and we've built that up through step two which is building the no love and trust the trust and whatever else we know who these people are. We know their pain points. We should know all that stuff, right? Now it's just about writing the copy to get them to take the next step, whether that be an email, whether that be an SMS, whether that be in a messenger sequence, whether that be in a retargeting app. And guess what? We can do it a couple of different ways. One, we model other brands, ad copy, right? Go find a brand out there that is the same as your in your industry and we, go, we can go into Facebook ads library and we can look at every other ad out there, right? Look at some of the top brands, have a look at their copy, have a look what hooks they're using, have a look what types of videos and images and everything that they're using and so on, all the different variations. So you can go by company, so you can choose some top brands in your industry, or you can go by keywords, right? And you can just model and look. I do a lot of researching in here, you know, if you're real estate, right? So we can go local real estate and we can find our local real estate agents and we can say, well, what's our guy down the road doing? What sorts of videos is he putting out there? You know, whatever else, okay? So you can do your research in ads library. The other way you can do it is you can use AI. And again, you know, you've got good old chat um, GPT, you know, you can just put in the right prompts, okay? The right prompts, being the key here and it can come out with some really really cool ad copy quite quickly right and then I think Nick you just shared ad creative I actually played with ad creative as as well um, unfortunately with some of those things I actually do better than than, than the AI at this stage uh, but not I'm always looking for the AI to beat me um, but I found that ad creative one it came up with lots of variations that which was which was cool um, as well so there's lots of AI tool out there again for for ad copy but it's all about some of the prompts that you put into it will make the biggest difference between what ads come out or not because it can actually produce some really, really, really hilarious and terrible ones. And especially for the Australian and New Zealand market, okay? They're, they're not quite as, as good yet, all right? And it probably will get that way. But we can use AI, okay? Again, the right prompts tend to make all the difference. And yeah. So, um, and, you know, obviously there's, I've had lots of success with lots of business owners that have implemented the system. We've got Keone, she's a natural path, made 18,000, you know, 500 of extra income. And that was in three months during COVID and she's a natural path, okay? Summer, you know, like she got the 90 qualified leads and made 25 and then she ended up making another 25 to 50K from one of the strategies. Carla Bettina, I told you about, you know, 5,000 to, to 100,000 audiences on on Facebook selling all over the world and having $70,000 months and you know we've got Lisa that had that 269% um, percent increase in revenue and lots more so I know I went super fast and I do apologize for that sort of so this is the QR code I literally just built it as you guys were you know coming on so I hope it works uh, if someone can test it and tell me um, I will give you a copy of the slide so just scan that and then um, you'll go through Cartly my messenger bot um, you'll jump onto my messenger bot follow the prompts and I will send out the slides to you as my way of saying thanks and thanks to Nick <laughs> excellent thank you Kerry how awesome was that eh sorry yeah
bit fast. Right, have we got any questions while I leave that on the screen just a little bit longer? Uh, I know that we've probably gone well over time, have I? No, you're pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah, only four minutes. That's all right. So, yeah, we've got this goal. Uh, any, so, if you've got any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask or uh, drop it into chat and uh, we'll, um, we'll monitor that as well too. Anyone got any questions? I think I probably they're all going, oh, brain, brain, brain. <laughs> I think they're all on Facebook creating their ads from all of that now. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Carrie, yeah. I, I got a question for you. Have you looked at any of the AI tools like Up, Upex or uh, Play or any of those ad creation tools that are out these days? I have been playing around with some ad creation tools. I haven't found any that I love yet, but keep in mind for ad creation, if we're talking images and copy, I am possibly doing better at this moment and I am testing some of them and I also have a team. Uh, what I find with some of the AI tools uh, that do creatives is they can be quite generic. So play with them because if you're going to get ads out there, why not? But some of them are a bit generic and, you know, I find they're only as good as some of the prompts, but I haven't, no, not a lot. I mean, enough, but not not some of the ones that you just suggested there. I haven't, haven't looked at, no. i got a quick question. You mentioned earlier about getting the statistics on a video. So you put the video up first. On your uh, page. Just, as, just on the page, just as a post. Yeah. And then you get the statistics from it, and then you you do your check, you do all your checking after that. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I tend to run a video. I put a video on my page, and I'll leave the video on my page for at least 24 to 48 hours, maybe sometimes three days before I'll turn it into a video ad. Mm -hmm. I'll get data on it first and then I'll turn it into video ad. And plus, you know, especially with like the, you know, videos out there, it's Facebook actually, if you put a video on Facebook and onto your page, it actually does you a favor for the first 24 hours or so. The algorithm tends to push it out into the feed a bit more. And so it does the heavy lifting. So you let it do the free stuff, heavy lifting, uh, before you turn it into a paid ad. Good, thank you. Okay, right, right. we have Ray got his hand up. Stop sharing now. Yeah. yeah. One, one hell of an interesting session, but I got a question, nothing to do with it. What was your best time for the marathon? Oh, good, good question. I, I yes, three hours twenty-one. Awesome, good on you. Yeah, it's, it's a, it was a good good time, and I did that. I think I did that when I was about forty-one. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And we got <laughs> old one. You got a question. Hello, I love that, Carrie. Great to see you again. Yeah. My question is around when you're doing webinars and yeah. events online, how much lead time do you allow nowadays and how much would you recommend investing in Facebook ads yeah. to promote an event? Yeah. So I, I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. All right. If you're starting out, which you're not all one, but if anyone's starting out doing webinars, they don't really know who the audience is, they're building their brand for the first time, you might want to run a camp and add for a week. But understand, even if you run it for a week before the webinar, your turn up rate is going to be a lot lower. Okay. What I do now, because I've already got a brand and stuff, I'll start my ads. If I've got a webinar on Thursday night, I will start the ads on either Monday or Tuesday and run them for, you know, three or four days, depends. Um, and I will spend, you know, anywhere from a hundred to 200. Um, and even sometimes I've just put a hundred bucks a day on it. It just all depends. Yeah. So, but hundred to 200 a day and I will run it for three to four days. So let's just say Monday and you're running on Thursday night, you start it on Monday. If you run it any further out, your turn up rate, even no, no matter what, your turn up rate is going to be a lot less because people forget. <laughs> Yeah. But what I do with that old one is I'm going to turn mine. Mine's an autumn. Mine's a cheeky little cheek cheek now. I ran live webinars every Thursday night for about three months. I took my best converting one and I turned it into a recording. And I'm still live. Like, as in, like everyone comes on at the same time, but the recording plays and I'm just in there answering questions. I do that now so that, you know, yeah. Although I'm about to record a new one, but that's, so I had the last three months, I've had just a recording going. That means the girls can jump on. Like I was at, you know, in Bali a week ago, well, two, you no, know, three weeks ago now, sitting by the pool. Um, that was my half day, sitting by the pool, um, drinking juices. And I made $40,000 from my half day that uh, Brainy was answering questions for, but I was teaching. <laughs> 
it's fun when that happens. And, and what webinar platform do you use? Is that like GoTo webinar or something? Yeah, like I use GoTo webinar. I know you can do the same on Zoom, but what I do is I get the video loaded into GoTo webinar so that it just, and then we essentially share the, the video that's built in there. What I sometimes find, and we've done the same process with Zoom, is that with Zoom, everything has to kind of stay on the screen and you can share your screen with, with sound. But if anything happens and it, drops out, it drops out. Whereas with GoToWebinar, the video is built inside there. So you can actually probably, you know, you can, I can still answer questions and it's just playing the the, the, the inbuilt one, not my screen. Yeah. So. Love mm. it. I yeah. love that idea. I love sitting by the pool, making lots of money. That sounds brilliant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Harry. Thanks. Um, we have a question here, Colin. Can we use your system in specific countries? It's got Canada. Does it work in Canada? Yeah. We've got Canadians. We've got Canadians. The only countries that it might not work as well for countries that, you know, don't like China, for instance, where Facebook isn't one of the, it's, it's you know, semi banned. Well, it's not banned. I got I went live in China on, on Facebook, um, but they tend to use WeChat more than, than Facebook. Um, I think the Canadians and the Americans are, use a, a little bit of combination of WhatsApp, probably more so. And again, the whole system can work with WhatsApp as well. Awesome. And Tiger, you've got a question. Hi, can you hear me, Kerry? Yep, sure can. <laughs> G'day, how are you? Um, thanks for tonight. Just wanted to ask, um, with this startup business, so I'm going to promote your offerings to a friend, um, do you have a standardised affordability based on the scale of the business owner already, or it, will there be a set fee for her to pay to get started with you? Yeah, so I have all different different programs. I have what is called the Ascension model, I guess. Um, so I have a thousand dollar course that I I sell right up to you know your your twenty five to thirty k. So it depends on if someone wants to learn the process and do a, a, a do it yourself course. You know, it's around about a thousand dollars. You know, I do retreats which people can come to and 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 you know get an immersion boot camp where they learn for six months and, and three days, which is around about that five thousand. And then we go up to you know, if someone doesn't want to do it themselves and they have a budget to pay an agency, well, then we started around about, you know, 4000 a month and, and onwards, you know, but that's for a business that's got the budget that, you know, that, you know, is already possibly getting conversions and, and can afford to to do that. So, yeah. You're right at 100%. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I think that's probably all we've got time for for our questions tonight. So, uh, Let's give Kerry a, a massive virtual round of applause. Thanks, Kerry, for coming along tonight. Yeah, I loved it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and just, just remember those slides are available yep. with the QR code there. Yep. Maybe yep. if people do want to contact you as well, Kerry, uh, what's the best way to find you? Yeah, just message me on Facebook. There um, you go, Facebook Messenger. Yep, yep. Best to do it on my page. There is a difference. It's Kerry Fitzgibbon Social Media for Business. Um, just, uh, yeah, that's. That's where we're answering more in there than on my personal profile. But uh... perfect, excellent. And uh, yeah, just remember that QR code. If you do want uh, that or the copy of the slides tonight, that was on the QR code. Have we got a link for that that we could drop into chat as well? Mm, I would do that, but I don't. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> there is no link. So if you do want it, then come and watch it on um, what is it? Okay, um, I can put it, I can I can get a link. I can get a link and we can pop it in, in somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I can That's right. we, we send it an email tomorrow, so we're gonna shoot the uh, link in there as well. But we do have the replay on YouTube tomorrow. So if you do want to have a uh, watch of this again, then go and jump onto the Smash Go YouTube channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, go and hit that subscribe button. Just remember to hit that little bell beside the subscribe button. And that'll let you know when the when this session has been uploaded and the future sessions as well too. And of course, if you know other people that you know having viewed this today or participated in this today, if you know other people that uh, would benefit from this as well, uh, send them along to YouTube to check it out as well too. All right. Well, I think that's probably it for tonight. So once again, thanks, Kerry, for uh, coming in on tonight. And thanks, everyone, for coming along tonight and joining us. Well, I know a few people were away because they're traveling home from the BX conference. There's quite a few people that were there as well, too. Um, but uh, any questions at all, hit Kerry up and on her Facebook page and, of course, the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but apart from that, look forward to seeing you all again next week. So go and have a sensational evening. <laughs>